Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Table Podcast, Season 10, Episode 100. He's Dave Bryant, I'm Alex Azor, SteelersDepot.com. Happy Friday, Steelers Nation. What a fitting episode for Episode 100, Dave, as we have just finished Round 1 of the 2020 NFL Draft and getting ready for Round 2 when the Steelers finally get on the clock. Absolutely. Let me put my mask on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me pull Dave Gettleman here. Uh, look, uh... It was kind of strange last night, wasn't it? Uh, sitting back and really being uh, uh, being a uh, you know, just an observer and not having to worry about oh Lord, you know, uh, the anticipation of, of a Steelers pick uh, coming up. It was fun to 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 uh, uh, kind of you know look around. You know, pick 18th there when the Dolphins were on the clock and and uh, you know reminisce about that being obviously the uh, the Mika Fitzpatrick. Uh, essentially, a, a Mika Fitzpatrick selection there, but uh, so it, it was a bit different uh, being being a, an observer for for round one there. And you know, I don't think really, and we're going to review it here in a little bit. I don't think there were a lot of surprises overall as far as guys that went in the first mm-hmm. round. Uh, I think obviously, you know, uh, uh, you know, the order was, was a little bit, you know, obviously, you know, you're not going to predict that 100, percent but uh, you know, the order, especially on a couple of, of players you know picking you know the same position i thought you know uh, uh was a little bit off there but not a not a uh not a lot of surprises overall very few trades especially early in this thing and uh look i mean you line it up now and, and here we go on day two of the draft and there are a lot of good players on the board for the steelers to uh to pick from at, at 49 overall Absolutely. For as unconventional as this draft was for a variety of reasons from a production standpoint, do I give the cybercast between ESPN and NFL Network a lot of uh, credit, especially Trey Wingo for, for running that show like that under very unusual circumstances. It did The draft did certainly feel chalk, especially at the top. Uh, before we talk about all that happened on day one and all that will happen on day two, we do want to mention at least one minor Steelers piece of news of note, uh, given the uh, drawn out nature of franchise tags in recent years in Pittsburgh. It's nice that Bud Dupree signed his franchise tag yesterday, officially locking him in on that deal. Uh, obviously, it could still work out a long term deal, although Jerry Dulac reports that that is unlikely to happen uh, the rest of the offseason. But Bud Dupree will play at the very least under his franchise tag in 2020. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, look, I mean, it's not a huge surprise. It's funny to watch all the BS that gets surrounded around that. As soon as, as soon as that happens, pe- people like, uh, uh, oh, this means the Steelers are probably going to trade Bud Dupree and 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 that kind of nonsense. You know, uh, uh, I mean, I think we both agree it would be it would be a monumental shock if the Steelers uh, traded Bud Dupree, especially right now. You know, mm-hmm. uh, being as how we're out outside of the first round, just, it just it floors me some of the things that that people write, you know, are, are, are around a minor news item like that. But uh, anyway, uh, the thing with Bud Dupree too, and Jerry Dulac tweeted this out, and and uh, you know, you you uh, Matthew Marks, you wrote about it first thing this morning. Here was the fact that. Yeah, I guess they, I guess he's uh, hearing or is speculating that that the Steelers won't get Bud Dupree signed to a long term deal, you know, uh, before the July fifteenth deadline. It sure seems mighty early to uh, to put that out there. I mean, we're all you know we're still almost three months away from that. A lot can happen unless you know unless both one side has come out. The, the Steelers side has come out and said, look. This just isn't going to happen, and mm-hmm. and just and and really, uh, you know, just a couple of weeks after saying, you know, when we give a guy a franchise tag, we want to sign him to a long term deal. Uh, I I don't know if that's just Dulac, you know, speculating or what. I mean, obviously, we'll see how this plays out. We have a long time to wait until that happens. And look, I mean, obviously, and I've said this from the get get go, if you do get Bud Dupree signed to a new new extension here uh, by the July 15th deadline, it's going to be more than the uh, than the franchise tag amount. Uh, uh, and I think the Steelers were ready and prepared for that anyway. And you know, I think along the lines of look, he's scheduled to earn almost 16 million dollars uh, this year on the. Fr- 
franchise tag. So in order to even entice him to sign a long-term deal, one would think that you'd have to give him right around 25 or $26 million in total between signing bonus and, and, and base salary in 2020 to get him to do that. So will mm-hmm. it, will you know, which way will this thing ultimately go? I, I don't know, but the big thing is, and you know that we ran into obviously the last time, or the Steelers ran into last time with Le'Veon Bell was him not signing his franchise tag. So at least that has happened now, and you know we can move forward and see which way the the uh, the, the, the uh, negotiations go at this point. I'm not entirely clear on Dulac's report that you know they're saying that if a Dupree extension happens, it has to happen after Watt gets paid. I don't know what the rationale that Watt has to get paid first would do when you already know how big of a deal that's going to be. I'm sure you already have some sort of ballpark figure and, and can already work off a you know a long term deal for Dupree based on the projected T.J. Watt number. So I don't understand entirely why Dupree would have to be after T.J. Watt. Yeah, I don't understand that either because, I mean, look, uh, you can you can make this thing I, – I know people have a hard time visualizing it, but, you know, you can make this thing work with, with, with giving Cam Hayward a deal this offseason, uh, giving Dupree uh, a deal later this offseason, and then going into next year and giving, giving Watt a deal, you know. And, and look, I mean, uh, it would be kind of monumental, at least from the Steelers' standpoint, to, to get – what done this off season? I mean, you know, since the uh, uh, since the fifth year option has come into mm-hmm. play, you know, they have never done that. They've always issued right. the fifth year option, uh, let the player play out the fourth year, and then you know, uh, deal with the uh, deal with the extension uh, the 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 off season before the fifth year kicks in. So mm-hmm. it's, unless, not, it's not like they're all both on expiring contracts. Watt has more time. So right, right, not, it, it, not one to one. Right, and it's just it, you know, it's just a matter of filing for that fit, you know, and and filing for that fifth year uh, option, which you're going to do before you know, it's, it's got to happen here within the next couple of weeks. I think May, I don't know, what is it, sixth or seventh? Yeah, early mid May uh, is the deadline for that. So yeah, I I don't I don't get why Dupree has to wait until Watt gets his deal. That doesn't make any sense because any if. Technically, if Watt gets his deal next off season, then Debris, yeah. then Debris going to be gone anyway. Right? Uh, yeah. You know, so that doesn't make a lot of sense from from Debris' uh, uh, point of view. But you know, circle the news, circle the opinion, whatever. Is it news or opinion, or what? What do you think? Speculation. Uh, it, it, it's tough to tell with Dulac. Sometimes there's another thing he he spec reported on uh, on a draft pick we'll talk a little later i i do generally rely on and, and trust you like more than some other guys but i know it is hard to kind of figure out how much a report some of these things are i agree uh but we'll see we have uh roughly three months i like the way you phrase it about what you know dupree's like going to colbert and his agent like okay so when can we do a deal well after tj watt well when's <laughs> walk going to get his deal well the summer of 2021 <laughs> Well, I'm I'm gone by then. Guys. That seems like you don't want to do a deal with me. Like it's just very strange. And then Colbert, uh, then Colbert gives him that cocked head, raise the eyebrows. Well, yeah, maybe maybe you, a, maybe, you, or something. yeah, maybe maybe you're getting the uh, maybe you're getting the picture here then. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, very weird. Uh, but that would create more maybe of a, a reason to draft an edge rusher high, which we think this team could and would do. We'll talk about that shortly. But let's recap round one of the 2020 NFL Draft Day briefly here. Uh, obviously, Steelers were not players atop. Uh, pick Joe Burrow, uh, wholly expected. I know there were Dolphins were apparently trying to make a major push to try to trade up. The Bengals held firm, and of course, uh, you know that was the right decision for for them. And then Chase Young goes second to Washington. The Detroit kind of got the party started at three. wasn't sure what they were going to do. Could they trade back? Ultimately, didn't happen. Very few trades, especially at the top here in the draft with Okuda. So let's just go like top ten. Any reaction to that? The Browns get Jedrick Wills, which I think is a great value pick for them. I, I tell you, just going back to the top pick in Joe Burrow, do you ever remember a monumental rise of a quarterback uh, uh, the way Joe Burrow was this past season at, at, at LSU? I mean, nobody was talking about mm-hmm. Joe Burrow uh, ahead of last year's draft, right? I mean, he was he right. was just this kid that might be a sixth or seventh round uh, kind of guy, uh, a guy who you know evidently made a little bit of progress, I guess, towards the end of end of that previous season there. But uh, man, when you when you look at his tape, you know, uh, 
you know, I know we haven't talked much about him for obvious reasons, but uh, boy, you know, you you want a guy that can extend the play. You want a guy that can see the field. You want a guy that can make uh, uh, that looks like he can make all the throws. Mm-hmm. You know, he. I know it was a quick rise, and you only have really you know all, all of last season to look at, but uh, it sure was an impressive uh, <laughs> uh, year of tape. And I guess the only question is, is was it enough tape? You know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, one year wonder uh, system. Uh, of course, a, a good system effect there. And, and look, I mean, surrounded by absolutely fantastic players there, right? Uh, mm. I guess that would be the only question on Joe Burrow there was, was uh, is, is that enough enough tape? Yeah, that that's fair. That's probably the one criticism people could make of Burrow, but still, I think, no doubt or pick for Cincinnati. I did joke about that, how he's going to play it behind the Bengals line and, and how they just destroyed, you know, Dalton last year. But this was the right pick, Burrow, I think, clearly the best quarterback, right up there with Andrew Luck in terms of the best quarterbacks of the uh, last of the century essentially so uh no-brainer pick and uh, they just have to have a good supporting cast around him hopefully improve that offensive line some more get aj green healthy and he'll have uh, some weapons to work with you're not going to win in the nfl without a franchise quarterback right yep, you know absolutely. so uh you got to take your shots and and uh that's obviously obviously they're taking their shot what's going to happen with andy dalton now huh I think they hold on to him ultimately. I don't know what the trade value is going to be at this point, and just given the fact that it's going to be so tough for these rookies to make that transition, given that the offseason programs are wiped out, and who knows what's going to happen with training camp preseason and start of the regular season, it's probably best just to hold on to Dalton in case Burrow needs some time to sit and kind of give that short veteran bridge option. Uh, Chase Young, no brainer there. You know the the, the Redskins uh, taking the edge rusher out of Ohio State. Uh, I wasn't uh, you know surprised at all. See Okuda go go uh, go to the Lions there. Uh, you know at third overall. I, I think where I was a little bit surprised though is Andrew Thomas. Uh, uh, look, Jedrick Jed Jed Jed. Jed Jedrick Wills out of Alabama was my top tackle. Now I guess mm-hmm. you could get into the whole left right side thing, right? Maybe. Uh, I just uh, went with the size. I think Gettleman likes size, and that's what I was projecting the draft off of. Who's the better player? Who uh, of, of the two? Um, I, I, I mean, I think Will's the attitude and nasty demeanor kind of makes me like him more, but I think they're fairly similar guys. And I think with this top tackle class, whether it was Wills, Thomas, Becton whoever it was hard to kind of go wrong because everyone was so close at the top we had not seen a tackle group this strong for quite some time so i'm not going to knock them forward i think any tackle they would have gone with this smart they just got to get some help to protect daniel jones uh, I was I, well. I look, I mean, I, I was just a little bit surprised that they didn't go the Alabama tackle there, uh, mm-hmm. and it's kind of unfortunate that a guy that I like lands with the Browns. Right. You know, right. uh, there. Uh, uh, of course, a couple of quarterbacks in there with Tua to the Dolphins and and Justin Herbert to the Chargers. Probably not huge surprises, but really, you got to slap some buyer beware stickers on both those, right? Sure. The medical with Tua is obviously a concern and Herbert. There's some some tape concerns. I know you're kind of down on Herbert based on, on, on what you've watched, but they're trying to get their franchise quarterbacks. As you said, you can't win without a franchise quarterback. Right. So, I mean, you can't I guess you can't blame them for taking the shots. And especially in the Dolphins case where where uh, as long as Tua's medicals check out, you know, that's, uh, you know, hooray for left handers. Right. You know, yeah, uh, <laughs> we have apparently a bunch of left-handers on the depot staff. Myself, what Josh Carney, Mel, I think Matthew's lefty. So left, I think every left-hander in America. Really? Is depot. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, I and I think with the proper side of my brain. So, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't want to touch that one, do you? All right, uh, Derek Brown. Uh, you know what I thought? Well, I was a little bit surprised here with the Panthers and Derek Brown too, because you know I thought, man, what an ideal opportunity to get a get a uh, freak inside line. Backer, you know, with with uh, with Isaiah Simmons, especially with uh, oh, who was it that's retiring? Uh, Keekly, uh, Luke, uh, Luke Keekley retiring and all uh, like that. So I I, you know, I was a little bit surprised there. Not not no not so much where the names you know that the names were in the top ten because I think you know uh, uh, that was kind of to be expected there. Uh, C J Henderson, Florida boy, staying in the state of uh, uh, Florida, going to the Jaguars uh, first or I mean second. Uh, second corner off the board I was a bit surprised he was the second corner off the board I think did you think he was going to be the first corner or someone was going to jump him I thought somebody might might might, might jump him there okay I, I figured he's going to be either the first or second there are some people actually like Henderson more than Okuda but I think that kind of stayed shock but a 10 uh first uh, or second AFC North selection here Jedrick Wolves I think is a, a home run pick for the Cleveland Browns 
Boy, hard to argue with that one, right? Yeah. You know, uh, and now they have uh, who who their bookends now. Uh, Jack Conklin on the right yeah, side. Yeah, Conklin, the who they signed uh, during the during the uh, free agency there, and, and and now the Alabama kid. Uh, boy, uh, Chris Hubbard, uh, not not a, not a great night for uh, former Pittsburgh Steelers offensive lineman. Who are the others besides that? Uh, Calvin Beecham, the next pick, right? Oh yeah, right, because he's still unsigned. They go with uh, Makai Becton, and and uh, can we draft uh, Makai Becton's Ooh. dad to play nose tackle? That dude has got to be at least four bills. Boy, least. he's uh, he's a big dude, and boy, to, to watch uh, rewatch uh, Becton uh, run at his size, uh, that's a little bit of a planet theory working on mm-hmm. uh, working on right there. So uh, then we finally get to the first wide receiver on the board. People, I, you know, people on my timeline were all getting all excited because. Because no wide receivers had had been taken yet. I, I'm not sure what they were looking at, at ahead of that because tech, you know, I I thought only one wide receiver would go off the board in the, in the first 11 picks. Okay, it yep. was it was zero. Uh, well, you know, Rugs, uh, 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 were you surprised the Raiders drafted Speed? Uh, no, I it was me and about a thousand other people that posted the uh, whatever that was wrestling dude rising up from the grave uh, in, in the spirit of Al Davis. So yeah, again, like tackle, it was kind of pick your flavor at receiver and four two sevens what rugs runs and yeah, that's a very Al Davis inspired selection. Would you have taken Lamb or Judy ahead of him? I thought they were going to go Lamb. Every single report had Mayock saying that they love CD Lamb and he was their guy. So the fact that it was Rugs was a surprise. Do I have a personal preference? I'm not sure, but I'm not going to blame somebody that's, you know, how good Ruggs is and that speed is just so rare to find and gives them that, that big play element. I think Buccaneers uh, were, were locked into getting a tackle either way here, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I yep. had them as – I thought Becton would last a couple of picks later uh, there for for them. But uh, they end up – I mean, they have to feel pretty good about uh, – uh, and they, they didn't they move up or no? Who, who uh, were they? Oh, uh, yeah, they moved up one spot. That was their first trade of the night, one spot with the 49ers. Okay, and they land Tristram Wirfs out of uh, uh, Iowa. Uh, you, you had a good feeling they were going to they were gonna go protection for Tom Brady mm-hmm. there. Yeah, I had him taking the Wolves. My mock draft obviously Wolves off the board, so Wolves makes a lot of sense because you better pr- protect uh, Tom Terrific. Uh, Javon Kinlaw, great kid, great story, great player. I watched about 10 minutes of Javon Kinlaw uh, around senior ball time, <laughs> and, and I turned the tape off because there was just no sense watching <laughs> watching anymore. Uh, mm-hmm. He he lands uh, on a 49ers team that, uh, boy, you, you know, that sure could use him up the middle, right? Yeah, the only concern is, you know, they trade DeForest Buckner for that first round pick to the Colts, and now they hope that, you know, Javon Kinlaw can be DeForest Buckner. Well, you had DeForest Buckner. Now, granted, you know, you're going to have to pay him, and this guy's a lot cheaper, and, you know, all that. But I guess the concern is just that you just traded your known commodity in Buckner for your unknown in Kinlaw and hope that he becomes DeForest Buckner. All right, uh, Jerry Judy, AJ Terrell to, to the Falcons, uh, uh, Judy to the Broncos, CD Lamb to the Cowboys. You knew, you knew, you knew Jerry was going to take uh, a kid out of Oklahoma there, right? Mm-hmm. I, well, for, I'm glad that uh, Jerry Jones had his nice time. It looked like he was on like SpaceX or something, like he was flying around the earth. I guess he was actually on his yacht. What a what a crazy flex setup that was for Jerry Jones. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if you got it, flown it. Nah, he fly, he knows how to flaunt it. But yeah, CD Lamb's a, a great pick for them. Austin Jackson at 18 for the Dolphins. That one surprised me a little bit. And then the big surprise that the, the first real kind of stunner of the night was Damon Arnett, the corner from Ohio State at 19, which was about, I would say, at least like 30 to 50 picks higher than what most people expected. I've got a buddy. I really, I didn't, I didn't see the the uh, the tackle as a surprise uh, for, for the Dolphins. I got a buddy back home, huge, huge Dolphins fan, and I told him before the start of the draft, I said, uh, "You're going to go to a, a tackle, and then I thought maybe a running back at uh, okay. with with, uh, with their last uh, with their with their last you know with their later later pick there, but uh, they ended up getting Tua, and then obviously the tackle. I think. I think they had to do that uh, with the tackle. You know, obviously uh, they they probably didn't. Uh, maybe they were hoping one of those other ones would have would have would have slid down to them there. But uh, yeah, Arnett. Uh, I did not I did not see Arnett uh, happening in the first round. Mm-hmm. And then a twenty, uh, Chasey in uh, the DN linebacker from LSU. The receiver run began twenty one, twenty two. Jalen Rager, who some people thought Pittsburgh could be interested in, goes to the Philadelphia Eagles, and then Justin Jefferson with a twenty second pick to Minnesota to try to replace Diggs. I'm not surprised Rager went in the first round. I'm surprised he went ahead of Justin Jefferson though. Yeah, I thought Jefferson was going to be an Eagle, but according to some of the Eagles buddies I, I listened to, they say Rager's a better scheme fit than Jeff, than Jefferson mm, okay. was. Okay, so. 
23, Kenneth Murray going to the Chargers. So that one surprised me a little bit, but a good player. And then your guy Ruiz goes 24th overall, first into your offensive lineman off the board. He goes to the New Orleans Saints. I connected Ruiz. I connected the dots of the Harbaugh's to the to the Ravens because obviously mm. they could use uh, they could use p- potentially you know a future center or, 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 or guard right with with, with yeah. Yonda and, and and all that's happened with him. I kind of thought, oh man, Ruiz that 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 that's a slam dunk perfect connect the dots fit uh, uh, to the Ravens. I when when the dust kind of settled and, and I started to go back through kind of my notes and 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 where these centers should be ranked. I know you and I talked a, a little bit about about well which you know who is the top center in this in this class but uh when it does settle out settle i i felt comfortable it was ruiz i like the chances of him getting drafted in the first round albeit a little bit later there uh mm. but uh the, the saints got you know uh, got him there and then brandon uh Iuk, uh the uh the, the uh, uh uh receiver out of arizona state to the 49ers i kind of wondered if this might be a spot where you could see Pittman go off the board right here mm. Yeah, I just think Ayuk's a better fit. Like, even though I like Denzel Mims more, I think in the 49ers, you know, offense, that's that's a lot of short passes, a lot of run after catch. Ayuk's actually a perfect fit. So I really like that that selection and that fit for Ayuk in San Francisco. And then we get another quarterback. Uh, I had, I had, I don't know who was originally in the spot here or not, but I had, I ended up having, having Jordan Love going to the Patriots in round one. Uh, uh I think by then the Patriots had traded out, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were at 23 with the Chargers, and they traded okay. out. Okay, uh, but anyway, Jordan Love to the Packers, and that certainly raised some raises some eyebrows for 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 obvious reason with with Aaron Rodgers there. And uh, look, Aaron Rodgers has got. Uh, I mean, this, this this is a situation very very similar to what happened to the Steelers a couple of years ago with uh, with Mason Rudolph, albeit uh, they got they didn't draft Rudolph in the first round, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, when you draft draft a quarterback in the first round that's uh that raises some eyebrows especially uh it's gonna be fun let me put it to you this way it's gonna be fun to watch passive aggressive Aaron Rodgers <laughs> deal with this Aaron Rodgers has some let me speak to your manager energy going on today <laughs> in Green Bay I think yeah I, I I like Jordan Love I get the thought process but you know I'm, my mentality when I have a Hall of Fame quarterback like Aaron Rodgers I want to win with Aaron Rodgers I don't want to find the replacement for Aaron Rodgers, so I get some of the injury concerns and backup issues, but man, I want to put talent around my Hall of Fame quarterback, not look for his replacement. I think this is a mistake by Green Bay. And uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, Adam Schefter kind of highlighted uh, uh, something that that uh, Aaron Rodgers had, had said, I guess earlier in the day or the day before, or something about you know they haven't drafted a true skill position player in however many years in the first round. Is that true with the when? Uh, yeah, uh, I was on, I think, Pat McAfee's show saying, yeah, it would be cool if they drafted a school position player, and they kind of did. Just should have been more specific. <laughs> Just his position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, do you, if, you're, if you're the GM or, or if, if you're uh, LaFleur, Le, you know, or those guys pulling those, sh- uh, calling, or Ted, who, who's still in charge over there, Ted? Uh, uh, he's, he's gone. Um, uh, I forget who GM is, uh, but uh, yeah, Matt LaFord is the uh, head coach. But but do you give do you give? Uh, and they were talking about this afterwards. I forget who was the analyst that said, "Well, surely you call Aaron Rodgers and give him the heads up uh, about this." Do you call Aaron Rodgers ahead of this, or is this none of his damn business? I don't know. The Steelers didn't call Ben right when they drafted Rudolph. I think you just draft your guy. I mean, he's going to find out one way or the other. You're not asking for his blessing on this. So I mean, I don't know how you handle it. I guess there's a courtesy call you could make, but. You're going to make the pick. You're going to make the pick. You know, uh, Jordan, Jordan Love, I like I, I like his ceiling still, but uh, mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not totally convinced he's a slam dunk first rounder. But you know how quarterbacks are. If you want one uh, and you think he's one of the top four <laughs> or five, got to get him in the first round generally. Mm-hmm. Seattle, always a wild card in the first round. Though, honestly, I'm not shocked by this. You listen to the Dave T. episode. He talked about Jordan Brooks being a potential first-round pick, and there he goes to 27, uh, one of the better cover and more athletic linebackers in this class. All right, and then the Ravens could get a gift drop right in their lap. Course. Yeah, you need, I, I, knew, I called this like an hour, two hours before the draft. Patrick Crean's going to be, be a Baltimore Raven because, of course, he is because Baltimore always gets their guy in the first round. Boy, they, uh, what a gift, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's that's because they've been searching for CJ Mosley's replacement. They could not find him at all last year. They're pulling guys off the street, with Fort and Bynes and whoever. This is a perfect fit for Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, 21. Right. He's a little over 21. Right. Or right at 21. Young yeah. and boy runs like the wind. Right. 
sideline mm-hmm. to sideline player, much like Devin Bush uh, with the Steelers uh, when he came out of Michigan. 29, Isaiah Wilson to replace Conklin at right tackle. Uh, Dolphins go corner at 30, which did surprise me after having Byron Jones and, and Howard. Uh, 31, corner Jeff Gladney. And then the first running back goes off the board at 32 to the Chiefs, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, who I think is a lot of fun and a really good fit for that offense. Did you think – where would you come in on running backs? Uh, uh, who Didn't you – who would you have number one overall? On my personal board, Taylor, and I had Edwards Hilaire uh, second. I thought Swift, I thought Swift was still going to go first in reality, but I, I had Taylor and then Edwards Hilaire as my one-two on my board. Yeah, I had put uh, I had put uh, I think one running back going in the first round here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I had I had two. I had Swift and I think Dobbins actually going to the Chiefs in my mock draft. So I mean, we're, we're you know neither one of us are shocked that 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 only one running back's off the board. Right. I thought it was going to be one to two uh, going. I thought maybe my Miami would take a Swift and then the Chiefs would probably gonna take a running back. And that's where I came up with two. So one, you know, right about there. I am surprised it ended up being CEH off the board first. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think a good fit, a really good receiver and just another weapon for Patrick Mahomes and that explosive Chiefs offense. So that is round one. Honestly, in terms of, of the Steelers situation, you had your tackle run, you had your receiver run. One running back went off the board. It went fairly expected as these things go trying to project out a whole first round yeah i think you know if you look at maybe okay there there was the group of people maybe thought rager you know uh jalen mm-hmm. rager slides uh you know potentially down maybe another selection that probably thought maybe jordan brooks right you know uh might might slide down to the steelers and all and obviously edwards edwards hilaire there's probably a group of people that thought maybe he would slide other than that you know, those are those are really the only ones off the board that that people maybe had in a group of players that they thought the Steelers could get at mm-hmm. forty nine overall, right? Well, I think Ruiz will be another one. Just going off Gil Brandt's rankings, having it having him in the mid forties, yeah, he's uh, off the Ruiz, board. Yeah, yeah, Brooks. I don't think any. I don't know if anyone really talked about Jordan Brooks becoming a Steeler, but yeah, I would just say Rager, maybe Ayuk, and Ruiz as guys that were possible options to Pittsburgh that are off the board. Other than that, it kind of went the way we thought it would. Yeah, and uh, now, now, I mean, uh, look, Steelers 49th overall. I guess it still sets up. Uh, you know, I guess we should move now into guys that they could potentially mm-hmm. look at. Guys, uh, so a few guys that you wrote about this morning. Yeah, I mean, even before I get to that list, some guys that I thought were going to be first round candidates that are now still available, which surprised me, is Denzel Mims from Baylor, guy we both like. I've talked about a lot. Ezra Cleveland out of Boise State, which I was wrong about. I thought he was going to be a first round pick. I thought it was going to Cleveland, but I think the fact that Wills fell, they get him, and that kind of pushes Cleveland down. Do I think either guy is there at 49? No, I still think they're off the board, so I didn't include them on that list, but those are a couple of first round strong candidates I believe are gonna be, you know, gone by now that are still at least in the conversation. Uh in terms of other options, I mean, again, running back, you start there. You got Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift, JK Dobbins, Cam Akers. If they really want a running back, you know, I expect there to be at least another back off the board by the time forty nine rolls around, but there should still be some options there for Pittsburgh. Uh, when you look, uh, 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 Blacklock's another one that a lot of people thought maybe could go in the first mm-hmm. round. Cleveland and Blacklock, I think, are, 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 are two that, that a lot of people thought could go in the first round. I, I thought Blacklock would fall because of the injuries and the lack of production, so I'm honestly not surprised by that. Do you think he falls even further all the way down to 49? Yeah, I wouldn't take him over Matabuke or Gallimore. I mean, I think um, I, I think he will fall. I'm not particularly interested in, in him as the pick, but I think he will fall a bit. I don't think you and I talked about him. I think we were a lot under the uns- uh, under the assumption that he would be off the board, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked, talked a, early, a right? Yeah, or it was more early on. Yeah, I mean, he's got a similar build as kind of that one gap penetrator. He's a little bit lighter. His run defense is a little bit weaker. The production, the injuries are, are concerns. I just, I didn't really get it w- w- with Ross Blacklock at a TCU. Uh, Cleveland, boy, he'd be hard to pass up if he slid to the Steelers, right? Yeah, I mean, you're looking at, you know, franchise left tackle, I think, potentially. He's got to get stronger, sure, but his tape is excellent. Just a remarkable athlete. Um, I know it may not help you win now, but it is going to be hard to turn him down if he's there. I mean, you still have Josh Jones, so there's a chance, you know, which tackle is going to go. Could one of them slip? Potentially, but uh, still, you know, 15 picks or so to get there. Uh, you still, th- I mean, w- with Josh Jones out of Houston and, and, and Cleveland out of Boise State, it would be a surprise. I, I think overall, if either one of those guys were there, right? So th- yeah. those two guys should start coming off the board fairly soon. But I was wrong about Cleveland being a first rounder, so I'm not going to guarantee anything. But uh, going back to running back, I mean, if Jonathan Taylor slips, if I mean Swift is there, Dobbins, you know, localish guy with speed and Acres, of course, fits pretty well as well. So again, if they want a running back, 
I mean, I think someone will be there. Who and will they fit perfectly? Who knows? But there'll be a name there. I think we're going to find out whether or not this team want, really wants a running back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because yeah, I mean, at choice. least one of the top five should be there, oh, yeah. uh, even if it's Acres. Uh, and there's a potential that there could be two, uh, uh, two there, right? You know, mm-hmm. uh, you would think one, you'd think Swift's going to come off the board at some point here. Uh, pr- pr- pretty soon, but I guess stranger things have happened there. But we're, uh, I think we're gonna find out how how uh, uh, how much you know what what you know what Kevin Colbert was saying and, and Tom was were saying the other day, <laughs> uh, because I think they're gonna have a shot at le- now. Here's the thing, you know, still people are all over the board with Acres. Still, you know, I mm-hmm. think a lot of people still thought that. You know, there was uh, there there was a decent chance that uh, those those top four guys would be off the board. You know, uh, consistently across the set of rankings, a lot of people had those top four running backs in the top fifty, right? Yeah, I mean, to me personally, I thought two were going to be gone, Swift and then like somebody else, and then maybe someone else. But I thought I could I could only say with confidence that two guys were going to be gone, and from there it was kind of a we'll see situation. But I mean, top you mean you you think you're talking top fifty or or first yeah, round. I thought by the time forty nine rolled around, there would be two backs off the board for sure, and that was as far as I was going to go in term, in terms of trying to guarantee anything. Okay. Well, but, but regardless, I mean, I I think there will at least be two gone, at least one more back taken. So two overall with Clyde Edwards, Edwards Hilaire being taken at 32nd and potentially more. And we'll see. As you said the other day, I think you said it well. We'll find out if this team wants a running back because odds are there'll be somebody there for them to take if they want a 49. Yeah, well, uh, and, and, and look, and there's going to be a couple more wide receivers probably come off the board before the time uh, the Steelers pick. You know, mm-hmm. uh, in, in this round, there's a couple of good ones in there that, that that fit as well too. You know, T. Higgins is a guy we talked about. Obviously, Michael Pittman uh, out of USC is another one. Denzel Mims, you know, yep. uh, out of Baylor is definitely one as, uh, of those as well too. And I think a little bit further down the list, uh, uh, Lynn Bowden out, out of Kentucky, and then uh, uh, K.J. Hamler out of Penn State. Yeah, I was thinking about this a little bit more. I was doing a little kind of Q&A on Twitter, and we're, I was being asked about uh, Bowden from Kentucky. And just the, the skill set makes sense because you're just trying to find guys to get on the field right away. And, you know, you know how much can you get a, running, a pure running back snaps? How much can you get a pure receiver snaps? It is kind of tough to project, obviously, uh, when everyone's healthy. So I think a guy like Bowden who can play a little running back, a little receiver, even played some quarterback, just kind of this jack-of-all trades that you can get on the field for 10 or 15 plays, actually kind of fits. We're just taking a little receiver snaps, a little running back snaps, not siphoning all from just one position. And another name, name to mention, we've, ta- we've talked about a little, but not a whole lot, and this is, again, from a spec report from Jerry Dulac, LaVisca Chenault from Colorado, who's a big, powerful dude. Injuries are a big concern with his aggressive play style, but he's like Bowden where he's a, you know, jack of all trades kind of guy, not from the quarterback aspect, but from a runner receiver standpoint um, who was productive and, um, you know, somebody that Dulac says to keep in mind, I guess it's kind of the, his, his angle there. Yeah, just I kind of worry about the uh, the injury history with him, you know, sure. m- m- more than anything. Good after the catch, though. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he uh, good good after the catch uh, numbers. Uh, I think I did I did a contextualization you on did. him. Yep, you did. Right. Um, I don't know if you remember any takeaways. I, I don't. I don't. I don't have any. I don't have it in front of me here. Uh, okay. When you look at the uh, at at the uh, pick uh, the the teams that pick ahead of the Steelers here currently uh, in 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 the second round, the Bengals, the Colts, the Lions, the Giants, the the Patriots, Panthers, Dolphins, Texans. Uh, Browns, Jaguars, Bears, Colts, Buccaneers, Broncos again. The Broncos have is that two picks for the Broncos ahead of them? No, one. It, well, they traded back, I think, at some point, didn't they? Uh, I don't. Know. Uh, Falcons and then the Jets and all. Uh, what I'm trying to do is say, okay, how many of these, uh, how many of these teams are likely to draft a running back, and how many of these teams are likely to draft a a, a wide receiver? We don't think the Buccaneers are going to draft a wide receiver, right? Probably not. I mean, you could just assume that there will be a couple receivers and at least one running back taken by the time 49 rolls around. Right. Uh, the Dolphins, I think, uh, boy, they're they're primed to maybe get a running uh, one of those running backs, right? You, mm-hmm. you, you would think. You would think. Uh, uh, the Patriots could obviously take a wide receiver. You know, Lord mm-hmm. knows they uh, they have problems uh, keeping uh, uh, <laughs> trying to find. Uh, Belichick's had rough time of it over the years drafting uh, drafting wide receivers there. So, 
you know, I'm just I'm just trying to tr- trying to uh, trying to figure out how many you know how many wide receivers, how many running backs might come off the board here. Yeah, I mean it's hard to nail down with certainty. Again, I think at least one running back, maybe two, and you could say what three receivers are probably going to be gone by the time 49, regardless of where they go to. You probably just would say that the three are off the board. <laughs> what do you think? Three. What direction do you think the Texans? The Texans could probably use a wide receiver about right now, right? I mean, Bill O'Brien's completely unpredictable at this point. So, yeah, I mean, they traded for Brandon Cooks, but has that enough? Probably not. Um, so, yeah, I, th- that's possible. But who knows what Bob's going to do. We don't think the Browns would draft a wide receiver, uh, I wouldn't think. I mean, the depth behind Landry and Beckham Jr. isn't isn't really anything there. So they could, in theory. I mean, really load up on that offense. Uh, who, do you, who, do you, who do you like? Who do you who do you like at this point? Who, who What are the best? Give me some odds here. In terms of what position they're going to yeah, go? Yeah, well, the Steelers. And, 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 uh, you know, obviously, the trade down is still possible, but probably mm-hmm. unlikely, right? Well, I mean, I still think if there's a year to do it, it's probably this one. Last time they had a draft with six picks, they traded down. That was back in 2001 and, and still got Casey Hampton. I mean, I'm still obviously sticking offense, and it, it could be it's running back receiver into your offensive line for me, potentially, uh, in that order. Um, again, somebody that's kind of that hybrid type like a Bowden, uh, like a Chenault would – Makes sense, and you know maybe Matt Canada's new ideas can kind of find ways to use him. Chenault, that whole Colorado offense, really ran through him when they needed a big play. They turned to number two, LaVisca Chenault, but the the, the concern is the injuries um, because he's got a, just a laundry list of them and hampered him in the pre-draft process as well. So offensive player, skill player, followed by interior offensive line, Hennessy, Cushenberry, that's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, let's see. Anybody, let's see, anybody else uh, defensively on the list that, that, that you think they would consider? Mm-hmm. No, the couple I listed was Antoine Winfield Jr., which I, I was wrong about. I thought he was going to be a first-round pick. Still think he's probably off the board by 49, but we'll see. Um, And that you know makes a lot of sense for the bloodlines and versatility and ball skills and all that. And then a couple interior defensive linemen, Justin Matty Buke from Texas A&M and Neville Gallimore from Oklahoma. Again, I think offense will be the choice, but defensive players, those are probably the top names to throw out there. And let's see, I mean, you uh, – uh, you wouldn't think they would have. I mean, Gros, Gros Matos not really a good fit. I wouldn't think. Uh, uh, yeah, probably not. Uh, out of Penn State, there. I'm. I still. The the thing with Zach Bond, I think Zach Bond's going to continue to fall. Obviously, uh, Hennessy out of out of Temple could be right. You know, of of all the guys on my list right now, I think he might be. He could potentially be the leader in the clubhouse right now. What what do you base that off of? Uh, just of I I think a couple of these wide receivers are going to go. I think guys. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a decent chance. Uh, and I knew this going in. You know, I, I said it might be close on Pittman, but I mean, there's only a couple of good receivers. You know, I guess it depends on the order. What do people think about sure. uh, 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 talent versus scheme? You know, mm-hmm. and 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 fit. You know, so uh, you know you have to think Higgins coming off the board soon. Maybe Pittman. Uh, and then obviously, uh, who's another one there? I, I, Bowden just feels a little high on some of these lists to me. Does he? Do yeah. You? Yeah, I mean, I think on the very high end, he's 49. I think he's, I think he could be there at 102, but I've seen some places to put him as the high end of things at um, at 49. And for Pittsburgh, if you don't trade back and you don't think he's there at 102, do you take him at 49? So I guess in terms of the playmaker weapon uh, label, Chenault will be more likely than Bowden. But I'm sure when they watch Benny Snell last year, they were watching Lynn Bowden, and who's got a very rare type of skill set. You know, I don't even have uh, on, on a few of my list here. Um, um, you know, uh, Gil Brandt and Dave T sent us over a list as well too i don't have either one of those two still kind of in the next uh i don't think in the next kind of 30 realm you know okay uh with, okay. with chenault in fact i kind of i think i viewed him more as a more in that third round stage along with like the clay pools and and mm-hmm. and, 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 and the kj you know kj hammers and all like hammers yeah. and all like that but uh uh yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see. But those are definitely – look, your boy Gallimore is still there too, right? And, mm-hmm. and, and yeah. Matt, Matt Abuke and a lot of guys we talked about there. So, they're look, they're going to have a selection of, of a pretty good player here. Mm-hmm. And then in round three, assuming it's offense, um, you're probably looking edge. And I'm looking at Curtis Weaver, and I think Alex Highsmith has a really good chance of becoming a Pittsburgh Steeler even as early as 102. Yeah, and boy, that just feels like um, it feels like two days away from from right now, uh, <laughs> uh, late in the third round, right? Yeah, and by the way, I did look it up, and I had a, a Twitter follower confirm it as well. Uh, Denzel Martin did coach him uh, at the Shrine Game, and so he got up close and personal work with him on special teams, which is some some valuable insight in the year where we're stuff to meet these guys in person. Right, and if you that late in the third round, you might as well consider it a fourth round 
pick anyway, exactly. right? Which is why they should trade down because they basically only have one day two pick. Mm-hmm. Um, looking at list, I think this is uh, day T's list. Uh, boy, he's got Acres way down uh, in the next thirty available players. He's got uh, uh, Zach Bond way down there. T Higgins uh, down there. It's funny. He's got Winfield Jr. and Pittman back to back. Those two of, just feel so linked. They they, they, they back do, back. And, and and you know you really you know you really could see either one of those two for all the reasons that we mentioned. All mm-hmm. the boxes checked, you know, throughout the uh, pre-draft process here. So, uh, but they're gonna they're gonna have their pick of a good player though, and Kevin Colbert told us as much, you know, uh, a few days ago. Mm-hmm. I liked uh, the shot of their Zoom call they had or whatever they're doing with the whole scouting department. They, you know, they don't get that look behind the curtain too often. So I want to see Colbert and Tomlin set up though. I haven't even I haven't seen that. I want to see what they're what they're working with. Hmm. Give me a name that would be really a surprise. Uh, uh, you know, a guy that's kind of in 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 that group of players that maybe. I mean, is Jalen Hurts at all? I mean, is that at all even possible? People keep asking me about that, and I say no. Yeah, God, I hope not. I mean, I mean, the only things I would get mad at with this draft is at 49 is corner or quarterback. Uh, that's the only things I would be upset about. Anything else I think would make sense, even if I wouldn't love it. I mean, I'll, I mean, I'll kind of lean on Dulac here and, and go with Chenault as, as a guy we haven't talked about a whole lot. He's yeah, really being a candidate until this podcast, essentially. And if you if you just want that kind of catch-all weapon, we'll make him work, take a little running back snaps, take a little receiver snaps. Injury happens that you can slide in. Big, powerful guy. Certainly has some toughness and attitude that – would lend itself to becoming a Pittsburgh steal. I got a clip of him against, I think, Stanford on a fourth and two where they have to do a little end around, and he just runs over the guy for the first down. So, I mean, if you want a surprise, then I'll kind of lean on Dulac here because Chenault wouldn't make sense from that standpoint. There's no edge that you're jumping up and down about right now uh, at 49 overall, right? Uh, Unless you went with your boy Uche, but I think that's uh, (laughs) unlikely at this point. Uh, I think it's going to be offense. Uh, I think it's going to be offense, too. Uh, and like, I mean, the Bond and Uche, that would, that would really make me Bond mad. Slip, and we had that, like, you had that discussion and what happens if Zach Bond uh, slipped. I mean, the Wisconsin edge, I know you're not, he's not your favorite, but. I mean, I like it from an athletic standpoint. It's just, uh, some of these guys, you know, to, to you're going to play around with, with trying to make them, you know, trying to get them to fit in a, you know, it just, uh, it doesn't feel right. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. maybe, no, maybe, I, a, maybe around later, you know, like I, sure. I don't, I don't hate either one of these guys. I just don't like him at, at, at 49 overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, I think I, I feel very strongly and it's a catch all. It's very vague, but I feel very strongly. They're going offensive 49. And then I think they have a good chance to dress edge at 102. I see Jonathan uh, Greenard on one of these, uh, I think it's Dave T's list too. in, in the next 30 available, I, I don't, he's a guy I don't see that belongs in that group. I'll be upset if, if that, if he becomes a stealer that early, you know, I think mm-hmm. later, later on in a draft. Okay. Sure, sure. Uh, but, 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 uh, but not, what do you think about Tom? Uh, Tom had, um, uh, had the Steelers uh, trade down scenario with, with Malik Harrison. Well, I think Malik Harrison feels like a sealer, big thumper, 250 pounds, very old school, but can move. I mean, the dude's a good athlete for that frame. And, you know, you've kind of talked about that they really like Vince Williams. I think I like Vince Williams more than the team likes Vince Williams and some concerns about, you know, what do you do after losing or releasing a guy like Mark Barron. So I, I think the fit is good, but I just, again, I, I lean on offense and they want to get weapons and they have this good defense and they, they kind of try to give Ben some more help and make this offense more explosive. So um, I wouldn't hate the pick again. Not much I would hate outside of quarter and corner, but, um, well, I mean, what, what, what about tight end? Would you jump up and down off a Cole Komet or, a, a Trout, uh, Adam Troutman were here? I mean, I would be happy just the fact that they're investing in the position for the first time in 13 years. That would be nice. Um, I think obviously there would be limitations in terms of how quickly you get them on the field. What is the role after just signing Ebron? But I would be happy just on the basis that they realize that you can draft a tight end before the fifth round because they apparently don't know that's allowed. Is K makers going to go in the second round to a team? I feel like, I feel like no, and if that team, if he's going to go, it's going to go to Pittsburgh just because, you know, how many backs are going to go in the second round, three, four, and Aka's probably going to be that one, uh, getting the short short straw. So if he goes anywhere, it's probably Pittsburgh, but I guess right now I would lean no, he doesn't. I would lean no, too, and I've kind of leaned that way a little while now. Just, mm-hmm. It just feel, I mean, just because, you know, we talked about a little bit earlier, there just feels like there's that one guy that kind of feels – that people just, I mean, they're not a good consensus on. Not that that means anything, because all it takes is one person to like the kid, right? Yeah. We, we saw that with Kansas City and, and CEA. I mean, you know, CEH. Yeah, he just feels like Acres where it's a little too high for 49 to take him, but also he's probably not going to be there at 102. So, like, in between, in between, dude. 
So, and we'll I think see. I think there were a couple of uh, uh, draft picks that had him kind of in that seventy realm, and that's kind of yeah. where it, where it feels like with him. I my mock draft I had him seventy three, I think. So yeah, I think that's where he's probably more likely to go. All right, what else? Uh, let's see. I think that's all I had here. I know we're doing a shorter episode today because we'll be back obviously tomorrow to talk about who they do pick, and we'll be back Sunday and Monday and for the next you know two years probably in a row. Um, so that, yeah, round two options, round three options. I think we can do some reader emails to close out the show. All right, let's uh, let's see. And there's a train coming, so feel free to answer the first one because I'm in my living room. All right. Let's see. The train, the train. Uh, Chuck Griffith writes in, Dave, does Mel, uh, I guess this is Mel Kuyper. Yeah, does Mel Kuyper live in a plastic house or has his consciousness been uploaded to, to a boring virtual world? Nice pick of the bridge. He should turn the monitor off to avoid uh, burning a uh, real company man with all that ESPN stuff. Uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, you know, I paid more attention, I think to Twitter than I did some of the, uh, analysis that, uh, that went on last night. How about you, Alex? What, what stuck out the most about the, uh, the broadcast last night? Well, again, I give him credit for just trying to, to do almost the impossible and put all this together remotely. Very difficult to do. I know they have to update Roger Goodell's software. Could you be any more <laughs> robotic and boring and this, like, I, I was – I thought he was actually... drunk. I thought he I thought he was on <laughs> liquor for a little bit. I, oh, that... he's a wine guy, you know. He's drinking, uh, like, yeah. that wine. Uh, could the fans see him whenever he was – or is he just talking to a, 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 the TV where they can't see him when he would introduce picks? I, I think all that's kind – of, personally, it, I viewed it as being more staged that they got these uh, fans to do this stuff and send in their – their that, that couldn't have all been live because somebody yeah. I, inevitably would have stuck a middle finger up. Right. Or, <laughs> Good point. Good you know? Point. So he's uh, just talking to us. Uh, no yeah, yeah. Kind of I don't think he's gonna win the here. Academy Award there. <laughs> yeah, come on, yeah. come on. Right. Yeah. Uh, right you know, I think it was fake egg on, and uh, yeah, I, 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 could do uh, with all that. You know, the virtual booing uh, seems, uh, seems, seems stage and all like that. Uh, on mm-hmm. top of it. it, there was a couple times that, uh, uh, you know, it sat, you know, he, he. he Got a couple of things wrong there, and made me kind of wonder if he was on the sauce there. Uh, but anyway, uh, here's the thing: I, I felt that the broadcast kind of started off kind of clunky uh, last night overall, but I thought it got a little bit better as the night went on. Yeah, um, I mean, it had its its awkward pauses for sure, uh, but that's to be expected. And the audio was not as clean, and I'm sure they couldn't do all the things they wanted to do. But overall, given the very difficult circumstances, um, I think they did, they all did a really good job. All right, this one from uh, Kaylor Winterburn as uh, Alex prepares to catch his train. Uh, hey, guys, one more question. Would you be upset if the Steelers drafted Jalen Hurts, not as a successor to Ben, but as a Taysom Hill-type do-it-all gadget quarterback? I think this is extremely unlikely, but just wanted to get your opinion. I might be short of TV, Caleb. Uh, if, 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 look, I don't. I don't think now is the time to, uh, to to get that quarterback, and I don't think Jalen Hurts is the one they should go after, even if it was uh, the, the time. That's just me, and I just, I mean, look, and if you did draft him, <laughs> you better have drafted him as a quarterback would would, uh, would be uh, my view and not as some sort of a Taysom Hill-type do-it-all gadget player. Yeah, I think it's a, a risk when teams try to chase what other teams do and try to find their version of that guy, like Taysom Hill. Like, I know that Hurts is a good athlete, but he's not Taysom Hill. He's not the receiver, the coverage guy. I mean, he's just a little bit of a runner that could give you some element there. Um, he's not Taysom Hill. It's not one-to-one, plus obviously the investment in Taysom Hill was not a uh, – he went on drafted, I'm pretty sure, right? I mean, this is not a first pick, for selection, second overall – or second-round guy. Uh, you know, so that's not analogous. So I, I would hate that for a lot of reasons. I would actually hate it more if they thought he was Taysom Hill because I think that's just kind of silly. Mm-hmm. What, what, why do you think people are so? Is it just the whole court franchise quarterback thing, and and him it, being it, a potential to be a guy that's still on the board there? Yeah, I think it's just sexy to talk about quarterbacks and future and potential and who's the heir after Ben and some of those big storylines. I get that. I get why the national media talks about it because that's what kind of sells, and that's easy to think. Ben's older, coming off surgery. Okay, we'll put a quarterback there. So, you know, what's what the Packers are apparently doing, 36-year-old quarterback. Let's go find someone for the future. But uh, it's just not going to be reality. And, again, if, I, the only way that Jalen Hurts helps you is if you want to trade down, if he's there at 49, another quarterback is there at 49, and someone wants to come up and get that last remaining tier two quarterback. 
Uh, Jamie Joyce uh, writes back in. He had a question the other day. He says, you guys totally answered my question before the question segment. Ha ha. Thanks. Your piece on Benny Snell on the Wednesday show was great. Happy draft day, guys. Love what uh, you're doing. Thanks uh, for checking back in there. Jamie, for that comment there. Let's see here. Todd Hall. Uh, hi, Dave. Uh, thanks for the content you and your team provide as well as running this contest. Okay, this is a con- contest entry form uh, here on this one. But what about the guy? What about the work the guy? I know we, we hit on it the other day, but, mm-hmm. uh, man, our, our guys are unrivaled, aren't they? Yeah, no, I think we're I think we're the best around when it comes to Steagle stuff. We got our draft day packet, which I think I think I unsticky that this morning. But um, yeah, I mean, just give you everything you need to know. I mean, I think we're as prepared as prepared can be for the start of this thing. Let's see if I can find uh, find us one more here somewhere in the midst of all this. Probably not. Uh... Oh, oh here, 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 here you go from, 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 from Kim uh, Ch- Chelbus. Uh, hey, Dave, I'm listening to the Wednesday podcast, and oh, Lord, you need to take away Alex's keyboard until he watches the movie Top Gun, Loverboy. <laughs> <laughs> she added uh, uh, oh, uh, Lover, Loverboy on, oh, this is Sean, by the way, I guess, uh, 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 going by the name at the bottom here the movie uh lover boy i couldn't finish listening to the podcast because i couldn't concentrate anymore i had to pause <laughs> it and type this email before i could finish love the show you guys are the best keep up the great work alex you need to find that loving feeling that's a scene from the movie yeah, uh, over that my I, head. I, i'm sure that means absolutely nothing uh, to you right now alex uh well, no we time go. for movies these next couple of days maybe after uh oh here's another one uh from uh th- th- that i want to make sure i got to and i hope i get the name right janae harley uh david Knox, love you and you know we got a lot of great uh great great uh great fans who write in all mm-hmm. on the show all the time love you and thanks for all the work that you do uh you have made nfl christmas very special this year well that means a lot uh, and thanks. now let's address a major need Alex not knowing some pop culture references <laughs> <laughs> has been amusing. Bless his heart. LOL. But not having watched Top Gun? Okay, fun is over. Major <laughs> sin and even greater need. Alex, get on this, please. Also, do you or listeners have a list of movies for Alex to watch? You've made numerous references over the past few years, and I'm curious. To be fair, Alex can select a few movies we, quote-unquote, old-timers should probably know. Thanks again. Send you lots of love, uh, peace, and positive vibes. Janae, P.S. Gold Star for pronouncing it correctly last time. Two gold stars if you can do it again. Hopefully I did uh, <laughs> there. Yeah, we'll have probably a little bit of fun with uh, Alex and, uh, and and some and a movie list for him after we get past uh, uh, past the uh, past the draft here. Here's one more for you. We're coming up on about an hour here, so we need to end this. But uh, Thomas Claffey uh, writes in, Hi, David Ox. As a semi-regular listener from Patriots Country, Country. Thank you guys for keeping me sane. You are impressively unbiased, and thank you for all you do. As a note, I would find it very helpful when discussing a draft prospect if you would re- repeat their name a couple of times throughout your discussion of them. I view I I have to rewind a lot because I missed the person's name when you first say it. A, a quick fun question: uh, the current backup quarterbacks in the league, who would you see being a Steelers quarterback in a few years? I could see RG3 or Jacoby set uh thanks tom uh i can't R- rg3 is gonna be lucky if he makes a roster again this year i think mm-hmm. i like uh, the brissette idea that, that one makes sense uh brissette would probably make a little bit of uh uh, uh sense there uh uh as far as potential future backup quarterbacks down the line mm-hmm. i don't know like Jeff driscoll someday if it was like just a, a random stealer for a hot second i don't know that's a good question Brissette, though I, I, I dig that suggestion and then like later on not anytime super soon but three four years from now uh and i think uh let's see i think that's got it all alex i think we, we've gone through it i think we've been able to knock this out in about an hour too right Yep, just about an hour. So obviously we'll be back for a special edition of the Terrible Podcast tomorrow, hopefully in the morning, uh, to talk about what happened on day two of the draft. We'll be back on Sunday to talk about day three. And then we'll be be back Monday to recap the whole thing and kind of get back into our normal flow of things. So busy couple of days for for us and the team on Steelers Depot. Yeah, and I think the one tomorrow morning will be super shorter. Uh, pro- yeah, they're going to be like half hour talks. I think that's right. how we do it. 
Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Steeders Depot. Follow Alex on Twitter at Alex underscore Kazora. Follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show, the Terrible Podcast at gmail.com. If you like what we do and you want to donate to the cause, please go to SteedersDepot.com. Hit the donate button, upright navigational bar. Uh, additionally, if you'd like an ad free version of SteedersDepot.com, we have that available as well, too. Go to SteedersDepot.com. Hit the ad free button for $25 for one calendar year. You can't really beat it. I mean, a lot of people taking advantage of this uh, for $25 via PayPal. You can have an ad-free version of SteedersDepot.com. That's been a smashing hit ever since we put it uh, in, in in a little over, or well over a year ago now. So, in the meantime, Alex and I will be back uh, at you about 24 hours from now. So, uh, stay safe, be well, and as always, thanks for listening to the Terrible Podcast with Dave and Alex.